Our guest today is a successful content marketer, podcast host, and entrepreneur who provides advice on working smarter and living better. He has interviewed top experts, work with he's worked with clients in various industries, and achieved notable success in generating revenue and raising investments. He values family. He's got a brand new one that's like almost two months old. He believes in working smart and has created online platforms that generated millions. Welcome to the show, Joe Fear. Hey, Jen. Thanks for having me here. And uh, it's great to reconnect. You were on my show uh, a couple months back and uh, it's fun to do it here. Yeah. And that was a, a thrill for me because I love your show. Joe's show is called the Hustle and Flow Chart Podcast, and you have had everybody who is anybody on that show. So many big names. How how do you get those big names? That's a that's a good question. It's one of the yeah. It's probably <laughs> the most obvious. Like like oh, how the heck can I get that person? But honestly, it comes into uh, a little bit of confidence and experience. You know, like practice of just doing the thing. But really, it's. I, I do have a strategy I can share, uh, which is probably one that you might be wanting to learn. Yeah, yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, at the same time, it's it's. I think there's a, a barrier that we all have in our brains that we're like, we're not ready to ask this person or, you know, my website's not good enough or whatever it is that might be holding us back mentally. And um, I just finally, there was like something flipped one day. It's like, I'm just going to start asking and I'm going to ask my friends. I'm going to figure out who's connected to who and, you know, walk down that whole chain. And it's kind of how my brain works anyway. It's like I start mapping out all the names. I'm like, who knows who? How do I do connect the dots kind of thing, you know? So, so it's the, that. There's a strategy too. <laughs> okay. Know. Well, uh, can, can we know the strategy or do we want to save that for another another day? No, let's go, let's go into it. I just <laughs> didn't want to. Yeah, uh, we're coming out hot. So <laughs> the there's this strategy. The Dream 100 is a concept from Chet Holmes that uh, some people may or may not know. And I don't need to go into his version of it. I kind of tweaked this. So, so I call this the Dream 100 strategy. And it's getting intentional about who are the people that you want on your podcast and even if you take a step back out of a podcast, like if you don't have one, it's okay. Maybe it's a show or a podcast you want a guest on as a guest and leverage someone else's virtual stage. That's kind of how I see podcasts and even you know YouTube collaborations, Instagram. You can do it on any platform. Everyone has their own little brand now these days. You know, if you don't, then true. I mean, even kid, it's scary <laughs> almost. <laughs> so, but it's it's the world we live in. So. It's like, okay, let's identify the people and the brands who we want to connect with for whatever reason. And having that reason in mind is it's probably a good idea, of course. But then, so this idea is to list these people very deliberately. I'm kind of jumping into it. It's a, it's a spreadsheet, Google Sheet. I, I keep it simple. And there's a reason for Google Sheets specifically mm -hmm. is... What you do is you can list all these names. Let's call it 100 people. If you want to start with 50, that's okay. No one's no one's uh, watching you. But literally, like there's these names are probably in our heads. Like who are the people that I would just love to connect with? They can become referral partners, maybe for something that I have. Uh, maybe they have an audience that I really want to get in front of, or borrow authority or credibility from this person and and bring them onto onto your stage or on on theirs. But either way, the so, idea is you're so if right now this target list of a hundred can be you want to go on their show, you want them on your show. It doesn't matter. Right now it's doesn't just matter. like who do you want to connect with? Correct. Okay. Yeah. And if you start there, then then you can go a little bit more in depth, but put those names on a list. So the hundred hundred people on a Google Sheet. And if you want to see my template, you can even swipe and, and literally copy. It, if you wish, it's at hustleandflowchart.com slash dream100. Kept it oh, simple. Thank so, you for that. We'll definitely yeah. put that in the show notes There's too. No opt in or anything. It literally just goes to a Google Sheet. So awesome. I'd recommend following that format. There's like a little instruction box on top that basically prompts people because um, you'll see where this is going. It's like, Hey, who do I want to connect with? Is kind of like, you know, you're, you're titling this box and then there's a list of names right below. Because the idea is that. You're going to have this list and you want to start sharing it out to the world. You're not just, this isn't an internal document. So you have these 100 names and let's put some moonshots on there. You can put on people that you 
kind of are connected with, or maybe you're one or two degrees separated, that's what is going to comprise of that 100 names of brands or people on that list. And this sheet now becomes this, it's a living document because it's always changing, of course. And you can link this into your email signature. And this is where if you have a Google sheet and a Google based email, it puts a little preview on the bottom of this email that looks like an attachment. And this is really where the mind starts going is that's automatic. So just because you're linking to another Google property, you know, okay, Google okay. to Google, uh -huh. a lot of people are using Google emails. And if you're not, don't feel like this is not for you. I would still do it. It's just not going to have the little preview thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but in your email signature, what I write and what is, you could just swipe this too, is like, hey, here's my dream 100 of people I'd love to get to know or connect with. Do you know anyone? And it's it's one of those things, you're just kind of lobbing it out there. So the idea is now every single email you send, the first email, I think in a thread, will put that little preview in like, a it looks like an attachment, but it's not. And that gets people clicking. It gets people thinking like, all right, what did, what did Jen just put here? You know, like, what is this list? Dream 100? Who does she want to connect with? And, and then you're going to start to see people will just naturally refer people to you. It's this inbound strategy without you really doing the asking. And if they're not on the list, they're probably going to connect you to people who they're like, oh, well, you should know this other person. You know, they're not in your list, but I'm going to connect you anyway. Or, or do you want to get connected? Do you ever? That's absolutely genius. I mean, we're sending emails all day, every day anyway. We might as well use that signature space for something other than like our LinkedIn profile picture. <laughs> and so yeah. that is that is just a great idea. Do you ever actively share that? Like, do, do you ever actively like send that list to someone or after you have a podcast episode, do you say, yeah. hey, OK, yeah, tell us. about that. Yes, that. yes. And uh, sometimes more than others, like right now, I'm pretty backlogged. So I'm like, I got to got to got to pace it out a little bit. But yes, um, after really any engagement, anyone that, you know, is connected, you can you'll start to get this feeling that I'm like, I just want to share this everywhere, you know, so start with your email. That's the easiest thing to do. And it's automated. So, you know, keep your list updated, but the link in your email stays the same, you know, your signature. Uh, I'm, the minute that we get off this call, <laughs> that's happening. Seriously. And, yeah. you know, I, my podcast started because of a challenge that Gary Vaynerchuk threw out there where he promised that he would come on your show mm -hmm. if you started a podcast and uploaded three episodes. And I had to chase him down like it was my job, like, like my life depended on it. But I, that's how I treated it. I mean, I can't even tell you how many, I don't know, maybe 50 80 hours that I spent really trying to track this man down. But I knew <laughs> that if I got him as my guest on my podcast, then I could get other people very easily because they weren't going to look at my downloads necessarily. They, right. they, were, they didn't know I didn't know what I was doing. They, they just saw that Gary Vaynerchuk was on there. And that's, that's how I got a lot of, a lot of big names. But if you, if you don't get that one big fish to start with, I, well, and even if you do, like, I love, I love this, this method. This is, fantastic. you don't need the big name. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. It helps because yeah, now, and this is where, and this kind of morphs into why I love podcasting so much. And, and it sounds like you're doing the same kind of idea is, you know, you, you bring someone on that you really want on your show or maybe not so much. I don't know me how I'm, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but like you have now this 30 minutes, 45 minutes, whatever it is of, banter and yeah, you're, you're, you're getting to know each other. You're going back and forth. You're smiling, you're nodding, all that fun stuff. It's all the likability, you know, psychology, right? Then at the end of it, you have the opportunity to do something more. It's not like everything just stops when you hit stop on this, you know, we're using, um, Zencaster, but if you're in zoom Riverside, whatever it is, there's still a relationship there that was just built virtually. So it's up to us to maybe in the moment would be a good thing to do, but then follow up is like, hey, maybe you know someone else, you know, or like, hey, check out this list. Like you said, here's my dream 100. Or if there is a specific person or persons they can ask or or something else. It's like, just extend that conversation because yeah, Gary V, I mean, guys obviously connected to everyone. Uh, it, that that was an opportunity. It's like, hey, you know, I have a, I have a, a little list here of, of people. Is there anyone that you think like, you know, that you can connect me with. 
and you could probably word it a little bit more persuasively or whatever. But at that point, they're probably just like, yeah, of course. Like I know a few of these people I'll, I'll send some emails right now. And- uh, I wish I would have known that then, you know, I wish sure. I would have known that now, but I, then, but I'm going to use it now. Okay. So we have a lot of our listeners do have podcasts, but a lot of our listeners do not have podcasts, but I believe that a hundred percent of our listeners could benefit by being a guest on other podcasts. And I know that you feel that way as well. Why is that? So it goes back to the virtual stage concept. And this is where, you know, there's brands everywhere. And if it's not a personal brand, it might be a company with someone that has a, a podcast and podcasts are, I won't say they're easy to get out there because there is a lot of work that goes into them. Uh, it can be easy to launch them. It's more sustaining them. So you mentioned there's a reason why Gary V said, you know, hey, get X amount of episodes out first. Right. So I would definitely look for podcasts with, you know, at least 20, let's say published, you know, so, you know, your your time's going to go somewhere, you know, right. ideally. So, but it goes into... So my, my thought is always like, who's listening? It's not necessarily the host or the person, but it's like, who's the audience that's engaging already with that brand, with that podcast, with that host? Because those are the people, I call them the uh, the target listener avatar. It's like, come up with this person, this persona. It's kind of like, you know, we've all done these avatar um, workout uh, exercises and workouts. And <laughs> feels like a workout sometimes. Yeah, it feels like it. And you have that picture of that person and it's the same kind of thing. It's like figure out who they are, demographics, psychographics, their pain, struggles, you know, their dreams. And you'll start to identify where do these people live? And a lot of them obviously are listening to podcasts. They're just attached to someone, a brand somewhere. Uh, maybe in there in your network, maybe they're not, but start with the people in your network and then get the referrals. Like, like I was just talking about with the mm-hmm. dream 100. And now yeah, guesting, I mean, you could show up and you have an audience that's already engaged. You know, the podcast listeners, for those of you who have a podcast, you know, the engagement rate, if you're looking at, you know, I think Apple gives you some of the stats, Spotify now does too. You could see the engagement rate of people on your episodes and it gives you at least some insight. I know podcasts. En- engagement, how? I, I, what do you mean? Like how, what, listener. I mean, other than just list, like, so if they're actually listening versus downloading well, like clicking off you basically they're listening through the entire episode like what oh. percentage it's kind of like how youtube has all the analytics you know and it shows where drop off rates are um with podcasting like you sorry spotify you know they have the whole there's a whole analytics dashboard that you have to sign up i think it's called spotify for podcasters mm-hmm. pretty, pretty direct <laughs> and, <laughs> um, and apple has their own thing and and they'll give you some of those metrics to see how well you're you're episodes are engaging. I've seen on average for my episodes, and because these are not public numbers, which is kind of nice at the same time, because most yeah. people don't know your numbers or how many subscribers you have either. Right. But at the same time, like I'm seeing about 70-ish, I've seen even up to 90% engagement rate. And that's like consumption rate of episodes. You compare that to a YouTube video or a Facebook ad or, or whatever else that, you know, you're trying to get that attention engagement and it's just a drop off. I mean, it's, it's just the, the, if you're thinking about podcasting, it's this very kind of intimate thing. Like everybody has their headphones on probably it's a one-to-one thing. They're not really, I mean, now it's getting a little bit more so, but like, it's not really on a TV where everybody's sitting around listening and talking about it. It can't happen, but the engagement rate in that one-to-one connection is where it's at. So. so when you're when you're looking for shows to be a guest on, what do you think about? Oh, I want to two things I want to put out there before I forget. One is stair stepping your way, uh, especially if you're new new at this, and the idea of you know pitching, well, someone like yourself that has a top one percent you know pod, uh, podcast a beginning podcaster or podcast guester uh, might be intimidated. But if they go on, you know, four or five or six or 10 small shows that they, it's easy for them to get a spot. And now they have sort of a resume to present. Yeah. It's, I think it's, it, it starts more, it's more of a confidence thing than anything. And it's the hardest part for anybody to, 
not only flip on the uh, the camera and start talking and feeling comfortable, but knowing like, yeah, your words are going out there. You don't really have control. Sometimes you do, you know, of, of, but let's be honest, you're kind of, <laughs> you're hoping for the best and you got to trust yourself. But I think that, yeah, there's a lot of merit in like, get some practice in, you know, like there's, I think there's over 3 million podcasts. I don't know the exact number. So there's a podcast for anybody in anything. Yeah. Now. yeah. Uh, most of them are not active. Let's be honest. A lot of them pod fade out. But at the same time, like there are so many good podcasts out there. If you just reached out and um, yeah, listen notes kind of gives you listen notes.com is a website you can, it's kind of like a search engine for podcasts. And it gives you rankings of shows. It kind of shows you what shows are connected to others. You can look at people's names and, you know, and I say that because you can kind of use it as a reference of like, all right, so who's been on these shows? Like, where are they at? Um, maybe I know them or not. Uh, does this person even have a show? I didn't know they had a podcast. You know, it's like these are ways you can kind of start to think, OK, well, maybe that's a good one. I can go reach out. I would say start with people in your network. Yeah, that's. I'm sure someone yeah. probably has a podcast that you know. I would I would start there for practice. What about the pitch itself? I mean, you know, my podcast is nowhere near as as big as yours and I I mean, we get inundated with pitches and when they first started, the ones that would say, "Hey Jen, just listen to your episode with Joe Fear and I really enjoyed when you talked about blah blah blah." Yeah. And I have a guest to be on your show and um and then you know, and now they all say that and it's very insincere and most of the time and they're not listening to your podcast. And I will say the one the one thing that do, I have actually accepted a few of these pitches and those were the ones that gave me very specific bulleted titles of what they were going they, they could share on the show. Yeah. And if I thought it was a good fit, then then a lot of, you know. A few times I have accepted those pitches. What what do you think about the actual pitch? Yeah, yeah, it's I get the same thing. And it's yeah, I think every podcaster these days, because our emails, you know, they're all tied in. So then you have AI and everybody's a great, you know, outreach person now these days. <laughs> right. And yeah, it's it's I ignore almost all of them. There are a few that sneak in. Usually it's because I'm like, oh, that's actually a bigger name person, or that's that's an author that I read. Okay, yeah, I'll chat. Yeah. Right. But yeah, like when you're thinking of pitching, and this is why I love referrals so much. I love the, you know, the warm introductions yes. that like, it just makes it a no brainer. That's how we got connected. That's mm -hmm. how pretty much everyone on my podcast came through a referral. It just makes it easier to be very honest. <laughs> you don't have to feel like you prove yourself, you know, so much. Right. So it just feels uh, better all the way around. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of life in a nutshell, right? That's how we find our friends and, and all that too. So I, I would lean into referrals more, but at, at the same time, when you're pitching, yeah, some of the items that stand out to me and when I, because I don't really pitch, but, uh, you know, but when I present myself, what I'm going to do is make sure that I, I'm actually listening to their episodes. And, and yeah, it's very easy to just drop a title of an episode, but that's, that could be scraped. And that's what these people are doing usually. But it's like, yeah, if there's a specific takeaway from an episode maybe something that you have implemented or you shared, you know, actually show that you've done something about it. Maybe you're posting on social about that episode or even commenting directly. I think that's take it out of email. I think is the big thing. <laughs> it, you, when you go to social go direct or even maybe message someone, you know, on uh, it could be LinkedIn, Twitter or X. I mean, that's there's some of these inboxes that not a lot of people are really going to. They're more going to the email inbox because it's easier. I think where you pitch is matters a lot. So show that you actually cared. Um, when you're pitching, actually show how you can give value. It's not just, hey, here's what I could talk about and what, you know, rah, rah, you know, my accomplishments are. But say like, hey, you know, um, going on your episode, I would love to be your shining star guest. Like I'm going to help you promote this to my X number of people on email, social. Uh, there's now with AI and all these tools, I'll just give you a little glimmer into my brain and how we operate is uh, there's a tool called cast magic that I feel like every podcaster and content creator should be using. And it's, I think it's cast magic. I won't give you my affiliate link, but cast magic. Oh, we want your affiliate link. So 
go ahead and say castmagic.io, but then in the in the show notes, we'll absolutely put your affiliate link. Thank you. Yeah, it's just hustleandflowchart.com okay, slash castmagic. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, let's do it again. Hustleandflowchart.castmagic forward slash no, God, just do it again. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so to get there, uh, hustleandflowchart.com slash cast magic, C A S T M A J R G I C. Can't spell magic. So yeah, cast magic is the tool that it's incredible. And basically, long story short, you upload an audio or video into this thing and it creates a whole bunch of content based off of what you just recorded. So it'll give you emails, it'll give you social media posts and all these other elements that you can now basically tell people, hey, I'm going to promote the heck out of this episode when I'm on there with you. And you know what, I can even give you a lot of this promotional material. So it makes your life easier to because most podcasters aren't promoting their own thing anyway. That's kind of the secret there. So I think that's huge. Yes. I mean, that's of great value to the podcast host. And and that sounds like a great tool. We've been using video.ai, V-I-D-Y-O. Do you know that? But that's you just You told video. me about that last time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that has like literally saved us hundreds of hours. So, oh, I can't wait to check this out. And that's for video clips, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. It's long. Like you take a long video. Yeah. And then it makes uh, short form videos. But the- Beautiful. But, you know, they've- They've always had tools like this and AppSumo and Product Hunt, but they were so clunky that you ended up having to edit them so much that it was just not even worth it, right? You might as well just do it from scratch. This, what makes this so brilliant is that it, um, and I'm sure it's true with Cast Magic as well, it knows the beginning, middle, and end of a thought. And yes, so it does. And that's the... I part of the AI part of the AI, yeah. right? Like, and so it's, it's, it really is intelligent in that way. So that's why it's been, because so, we, we very rarely have to make any edits other than maybe like a design tweak or something. That's awesome. So, yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. Try that too. Uh, it's, it doesn't do the video part. So yeah, what you're doing there, Jen, with video is, is great because they kind of work in conjunction and same, and speaking of that, like reels and shorts, that's definitely an opportunity right now. Uh, like, especially on YouTube, it's, it's just reading something. That's the biggest way to d get discovered on YouTube right now and to get new subscribers. We're seeing with it. shorts. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, that is why this is the flagship episode um, where we are doing video. So if you're listening, um, we're actually doing this in Zencaster with video turned on. And although I've had access to this capability always, of course, I mean, since forever. Uh, I never turn the camera on, not because I'm shy, but <laughs> because uh, I heard once that uh, I heard a, a podcast guy once saying that he didn't like to do video because the listeners would lose and not be able to see all of those nonverbal verbal communication things that we do. Yeah. Um, like I was thinking early on when you were talking about the 100 hit list or whatever. Um, I, on camera, made a gesture to you to show you that my head was exploding, right? right? But the listeners, they can't hear that. But I was looking at your amazing uh, mind map thing that you have, flowchart, which um, we're going to be able to share with our, uh, our listeners. And a nice portion of that was repurposing the content into video. And I thought, well, really, it's dumb that I haven't been. I mean, it really is. I, and I do think we connect more when we're looking at each other face to face. So yes. thanks for starting a trend here at Front Row Entrepreneur. <laughs> Twisted your arm a podcast. little bit. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm sold, I think. So this was Good. this was very easy, even though I was I was a little hesitant because my my um headphones are ugly and they clash. They're like neon green. I think they're cool. They're unique. Plaid <laughs> shirt, but thank you. Okay. Back to guesting. What what can people do once they've been on the show? How can they best leverage their appearance on the show? Yeah, that's a that's a great point. And um, it, I would say with what we were just talking about is going in with the mindset that, well, of course, you know, prepare yourself for the show, listen to the episodes, you know, a couple episodes beforehand, go in and, and prepare the host with with questions, with topics and things. So they are well equipped to present you correctly, you know, give them point, bios, yeah. a short and long bio. I know I gave that to you. And, mm -hmm. and you also have a great in, in, uh, intake form as well, Jen, not most people have that as well. So oh, thank you. 
Yeah, it's kind of twofer because uh, sometimes the host helps you out. Sometimes they really don't. And most times that's the case. So I would say a even a nice one sheet like there's and I don't have a, a template or a link I can direct you to quickly. But like for my show and really myself, if you can just imagine a one sheet has your, your face on there, it could be your podcast if you have one as well. And then put all your accomplishments on like one column. It's kind of like a two column thing. And, you know, there's a quick bio about you, maybe some of the topics and things you're known to talk about and love to discuss. And then talk about maybe some partnerships or different things that you're doing in general in business. But that's like a nice one snapshot. It's not a big old media kit where it's daunting. It's literally just like, oh, it looks cool. And you can make it in Canva. I have like a little template in there. And you know, it's, it's appealing. How can we see your one sheet? I would love to see I that. I know. Now I'm like, dang it. I, I really got to make a, a link. I'll <laughs> we'll make sure that you okay. have it and then I'll we can link it in the show notes. If okay. That thank you. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. If something just came to mind for me that I did ages ago and I haven't used it in a while, but I took all the podcasts that I've ever been on, which most of them showed up in Spotify mm -hmm. and I just searched my own name. And then so every podcast I've ever been on populated. Yeah. And then I created a playlist and it said, it says Jen Laner's podcast appearances. Mm. And so I have a link now and it was, it's embeddable as well. I believe it's very pretty. It's a pretty list. And, um, and then that gave, gives me something to share with a potential podcast host. I have, I haven't used that in forever, but just Got a it. thought of way, a way of le leveraging appearances. Yeah. Is that through pod chaser? Is that no? Is that I mean, is that no, no? I just I just typed my name into Spotify. And, Spotify, and then and, it's all there. Yeah, I mean, not all, but like a good portion of every podcast. That's a good. I haven't done that, and I I like that. And yeah, you can embed it, and it looks professional. You know, yeah, it's it's reputable because it's on Spotify. <laughs> People recognize it. Yeah. So back to guesting and preparing. So the one sheet is a great resource that you can use for not only your own podcast and to get sponsorships or partnerships, which we could talk about too. And all kind of works together. Yeah. Yeah. These are the foundational kind of elements that I always coach people through. But uh, go in there. So you're preparing your, your, your host, you know, the, the host of the show you want to go on. So everything you can do to prepare them is just going to make your life and their life easier. Uh, if you have some links to like a call to action, like we were talking about a checklist or some kind of lead magnet that is in addition to uh, maybe your podcast you want to shout out or your YouTube channel or your website, something a little bit more vague, have something focused as well that then, you know, speaks to a specific pain point. And like the idea is that the audience, you're going to cherry pick the ones that are most engaged, let's be honest. And they're not leaving that show. They're in addition, they're going with you. And because you, you resonated with them somehow. So you want to give them a nice, clear way to continue that path into your world. And that's where, you know, we, we talk about there's a checklist that I have. And um, if it's okay, Jen, maybe I'll just shout it out. As yeah, yeah, please. We all want that checklist. <laughs> yeah. So it's a it's like a 16 point checklist that goes through how to leverage podcasting to generate more leads and sales for your business. And uh, it'll put you on my email list, but also gives you a nice uh, a PDF checklist and a lot more. Hustleandflowchart.com slash checklist. Pretty simple. Is We'll get you there. And having something like that prepared, it could be custom to the show or just broad like that. Either way works. And don't complicate it, but have it prepared. And and give give that to them in advance as well. You know, so the links they can all be shared in the show notes. That's a lot of the prep. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, honestly, like that's probably like the best way to leverage your guest appearance is to is to capture their audience through a very generous gift to their audience. People really appreciate it. Uh, if you bring them into a mini course, for example, if if you if you put it behind a not a paywall, but a um, like a, a login, login yeah. um, to like a little three part mini course. Now they're in your world, you know, and like yeah. um, there, you know, there's all sorts of possibilities. And, you know, I, I missed an opportunity one time. I just could just kick myself. I mean, I was just really a dummy, but I went on to, I went on to <laughs> a, a very big podcast and uh, I did not have my, I didn't have an offer in order. Right. And so, 
I, I, I think I had a freebie for them, but uh, I don't think it was that good. Uh, and more importantly, I didn't have an offer and they were ready to buy. These people came and they were just like ready to buy. And I, ha- I really didn't have my, based on the topic that we were discussing, I didn't have an offer created. And I was, you know, I still kind of kick myself. I, I want to go back on this person's podcast, but <laughs> Maybe but maybe I will is, try that. You'll get more opportunities. And and that's the thing with podcasting. I mean, I know so many people that will just focus on this as their marketing strategy is podcast guesting. And and they show up everywhere. And let's be honest, they're putting in the work and time. Yes. But there's, you know, you 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 get some of this stuff done, like your one sheet, your your the guesting, you know, there's a document that you can create with questions that's maybe not show specific, like what we did, you know, you had an intake form, but at the same time, you could have kind of a general docket document of topics and then questions that are pretty common that a host can ask of you along with your bio in there, your headshots, links to all your socials, your, your freebie, even your offer, um, all that stuff. If you could combine that in one place and then just literally send that to a host, that's 90% of the game right there. And most people are just are not doing that. Host will thank you. <laughs> to send send it all to them digitally, right? Yes, yes, yes. Have you ever heard of anybody using snail mail to get on a podcast? To get on a podcast? Actually, I guess no, that's just straight up bribery, you know, like just send like I think it's a great some idea. chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, I you mean, know? let's be honest. That's like the most neglected inbox these days. True. Oh my gosh. Like, There's n- nobody else in there. It's like yeah. wide open. And I used to have a whole newsletter business. My my previous uh, 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 business partner and I, Matt, we had a we used to send monthly newsletters in the mail and we it was a paid thing on the back of our podcast actually. It was like all the notes from the episodes. But I loved it because it like people don't leave for one. It was a subscription thing, but at the same time there were always these offers or other things we would send. In addition, you know, just because we knew, yeah, like, well, we got your address. You want more of this and no one else is marketing to you in that address. So I've done it a few times. I never really stuck with it, but, um, but this gives me a great idea because I am headed into (laughs) a launch. And what I did once was I, um, had my sales page printed and I just sent it in the mail to everybody who's, whose snail mail address I had. And why, why not do that again? I'm going to do that again. Thank and I love the that. idea of, to be honest, I didn't really think about, I mean, we did do this through the newsletter is like, Hey, subscribe to the episode, you know, and we almost like contest, you know, have little inserts inside the the newsletter, but sending it separately. I mean, there's so many tools. There's not, there's one that I'm thinking of like a handwritten, you know, there's all these tools I can kind of basically mimic handwriting. Right. Right. And now with AI, you can kind of automate a lot. But, or you uh, could do what I did, and I hired a local like Task Rabbit. I like it, and uh, and I tested out handwriting, and they had to send me handwriting samples. And I don't know, I paid two hundred dollars maybe to have them hand address all of the mail. Uh huh. That's awesome. I mean, it, you know, <laughs> someone's going to open that envelope or whatever it is. Yeah, and that could be a pitch. That could be a. Uh, it could be a, an ethical bribe to your audience if you have their their you know, their uh, address. I'm sorry. I was like blanking. I kept saying email address. I'm like, that's how locked in like email address. No, physical address. And yeah, bribe them to honestly, like if you have a podcast or anything, it's like get them to rate and review and and also subscribe to what you have going on. You know, if you have an internal email list, it's actually, it gives me an idea because it's like that can be a little mini contest or giveaway or incentive for and, and it's just cutting through all the clutter that we all deal with these days. Um, going I straight love to it. The physical. I love it. Okay. A little earlier, you had mentioned sponsorship and I definitely don't want to let you go until <laughs> um, we pick your brain a little bit about sponsorship because yes. uh, on your website, which you guys, you have to go look at his website, go to hustleandflowchart.com. And of course there's hustleandflowchart.com forward slash checklist, but just his main website Go there and tell me that is not the best website alive today. It is really, really, really so good. Um, so that so much so that before we before we um, press record, I, I had to find out who who made the website, uh, which we can give a shout out to them. Give too, them a shout we? out. It's Studio all good. One Design, 
and it's it's really fantastic and i'm going to be calling them to redo my website but what was my point what, what was i saying right before that Let's see you were saying uh website oh sponsorships partnerships. Uh, yeah so i noticed that you have a a tab that says partnerships and oh it looks so juicy so can you just talk us through your your sponsorship framework Definitely. and let us know how we could think about how much to charge for a sponsored spot yeah yeah so this is having a partnership anything uh i like partnership more than sponsorships mm -hmm. and yeah because it, it kind of opens up the doors to maybe it's a jv thing you know we could do some affiliate stuff uh maybe it is paid sponsorship that's cool or maybe it's a i want to be a part of your network kind of thing and yes, I do them all <laughs> and, uh, because I, I honestly think like podcasting is the best networking tool, period, like in stop, like obviously in person is the best. But let's be honest, like if you have a podcast, you have the ability to connect with almost anyone you want using like the Dream 100 strategy and being intentional. But also this is the part that most people forget is like you have a listener or a watcher who's super engaged and you're affecting their lives. So there's like this ripple effect. I'm, I've never, I never forget the fact that it's like, okay, we're, we're in this unique position that we are cultivating like ideas and expression, putting them out into the world and people are going to change their lives because of it. So it's kind of us to up to us to do the right thing. Right. Don't screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Yeah. Yeah. So with that in mind, it's like, well, I bet there's some other partners out there that we can collab and jive with that kind of talk our language or can help our audience, you know, further their lives, whatever that looks like and whatever your specialty is. And when it comes to sponsor or par partnership sponsorships on most people don't have any. I just did a, a, a poll to um, PodFest. It's a big conference I'll be going out to next week. And I was doing a, a workshop to their attendees. And I think they said it was like 10% have sponsorships or some kind of partnerships. I'm like, these are existing podcasters. A lot of them were over 100 episodes in. I'm like, you can honestly get someone from day one. But especially if you're in by 100 episodes, it's like have some kind of something there to at least cover your costs, you know, of, of yes. producing your, your podcast because most people don't. The the whole thing is like figure out it could be a dream 100 thing. And this is uh, probably one of the best ways to start the conversation is like put some of those people, those brands that you would love to work with, maybe the CEO's name or someone on there, put them on that dream 100 list. So at least you're starting to become in their orbit. Ooh. You know, you're within you at least can kind of, you know, you can have a chat here and get to know them a little more. I've done that so many times, you know, where there's where you you get the CEO and then you present a partnership opportunity. Not even later. really a pitch, but it's like it's you just kind of you start that conversation. It's like, hey, how can we collab? And you know, I I think you have something really cool. Um, Studio One Designs, Greg. I mean, you mentioned him earlier. Uh, we did a collaboration at the beginning of early in last year, and you know, I brought him on the podcast. There was. We talked and we're like, man, there's a lot of cool stuff we can we can give to my audience, but also his audience. And so we figured out a deal where essentially, you know, it, it started from having that conversation and just knowing, hey, more people need to see this. So let's figure out a way to essentially arrange a deal. It's not always money. Maybe it's maybe it's a trade. Maybe it's a like if you start get away from just like it has to be a paid for dollars kind of arrangement. Um, that's where you can kind of come up with a, maybe a lateral kind of deal there. Uh, listeners, PS, a uh, little, little side note here. If you go to Studio One Design and you, um, and you decide to work with them, you make sure and let them know that you heard about it on the Front Row Entrepreneur Seriously. podcast with Jen Lehner, and maybe they'll end up being a sponsor uh, of this show. Smart, smart. <laughs> so, but, but, but there has to be like, do you ever have people that reach out to you and they say, you know, we'd like to be a sponsor. How do you decide? with those direct, you know, that, that aren't sort of like the warm fuzzy relationship Correct. you might yeah. have with someone, how do you charge them? Okay. Yeah. And specifically. So I have a, I have a good answer there. It's, there's a CPM that most people will want to pay, uh, sponsorship, especially if it's an agency and typically if they're reaching cost per out, mention. cost per mention, yeah. yeah. Or cost per thousand is another like, and you start doing the math because this is all now the ad world. You know, if you do you know, Facebook ads, you would know what CPM and, kind of what that looks like basically 
the industry standard goes from $20 to $30 CPM for payment uh, for a sponsored read. And this is like how an agency, a podcast agency will think in terms of like what they're willing to pay you as a host. 80% of the time, they're going to have that in their mind of what they want to pay you. You start doing the math on that, and I'm not good at head math right now. <laughs> it's still a little <laughs> early here. Is it's not a lot of money. It's like maybe maybe you can get a couple bottles of wine that month, you know, if like you take on that sponsor. Mm-hmm. The way that I have flipped it and always have done this for since the beginning of the episode of the show is get yourself out of that CPM game. It's no one wins. <laughs> and honestly, it's more of the corporate they win. So you as the creator needs to, you need to have your your own value and know that you can arrange the pieces and say, hey, I have a reach outside of just the audio space. I have reach on YouTube. I have reach on my email list, my mm-hmm. social media list, all these other platforms where your brand shows up. And, you know, you will mention your podcast or you can mention them as a sponsored you know, partnership. Put that on there. And that's where on your one sheet, back to that one sheet document, your reach is very much on there. That one sheet document, by the way, has landed me so many deals and also a partnership with HubSpot on their podcast network. It was because of that one sheet. <laughs> like I, Because it shows like, oh, here are the metrics. Here's the reach. Here's what they do. Here are other people that trust them, other brands. It's all like a big credibility piece, basically. So that is, first of all, goals. And I want to talk about this network thing because more and more podcasts I listen to, the podcaster themselves will mention another podcast or podcaster and rave about it. So that's, they're part of a network like the HubSpot network, right? Probably. Maybe. Yeah. And then I I don't really understand how that works. Well, how about this, Jen? Really fast. uh, Before the network, I want to close the loop on the, how to price these things really fast. Yes. Sorry. Because that's where, no, you're good. Because a great question over there. I, I just wrote it down so I remember. Is so when you package yourself up, get out of the CPM and put yourself into. So now you're showing, hey, I have more reach, and I, I'm not just an audio podcaster. I'm a video podcaster. I'm a I'm a YouTuber. I'm a shorts creator. Like all these things extend your reach, which then bumps your value up because you are doing the work. And now package that up as a flat fee. Don't do this whole CPM thing. But now you can give three tiers, you know, and this is how I think if, shoot, if uh, I might have a link to it, um, I'm going to find it for you. But uh, I think it's hustleandflowchart.com slash, it's not slash sponsorship because it goes my, but there's like a rates page. It might be media. <laughs> no, I'm just throwing links out there. But uh, yeah, basically put like three tiers. So, you know, gold, silver, bronze, and and figure out where can you shout these people out. And now you're giving them at least a few options on how they can work with you and how they can integrate their their ads into what you're doing. And like I said, might not be a paid kind of thing. Maybe they see that and they're like, okay, cool. Well, I have something else valuable that you might like as a trade. Maybe there's a deal that can be made. But at least you're putting yourself out there with your rates. You're like establishing a baseline of what you think your value is, not what the industry says you should be. Have you ever been in a situation where someone has reached out to you and you were just like, Ugh, like oh, yeah. I don't know how to tell them, but I don't do, you know, essential oils or, yeah, you know, yeah. Or something. It, uh, it, it no, like, you know, no offense to anyone doing essential oils. Yeah, I, I, I love mean, essential it, maybe oils it just great. wouldn't be a, a my. <laughs> It might yeah, not yeah. be a fit for your business, you know. And honestly, I wouldn't stress over it. Like you're going to get some, but honestly, if you're if you're getting a lot of inbound, that's a good problem. Yeah, because most people don't even get that much. Uh, but the more you put yourself out there, uh, the more of these partnerships and things you do and publicly state, yeah, the more inbound you will get. I mean, you can you can politely say, "Hey, no, not right now," <laughs> kind of thing. Or we can ignore them. Yeah, it just depends if they're spamming too. You know, right, right. What, what's the context there? But yeah, that's the big thing is like really it's flip from CPM, which is industry standard to flat fee with specific ways that you want to like deliverables you'll give with that sponsorship. Can you give us an example of a package? It doesn't have to be your package, but like the way to look at sort of a a gold, I mean, a silver, gold, platinum, whatever. For yeah. sure. And off the top of my head, and this is where... 
I'll, I'll share a link too, because I think it's helpful. It's another thing people can swipe like a gold can be, uh, let's, let's call it a, a pre-roll or a mid-roll mention in every episode that I release. So it could be, you know, like a 30 second ad spot, let's say to a software product. And that can, you know, it's just a quick little ad read. Typically it's something that you have some freedom over. They probably give you some talking points and then sends to a link. Sometimes you can do that as an affiliate in addition to being a sponsor. That's mm, pretty sweet. Nice. Yeah. It doesn't always ha- work that way, Double but when you offer it, yeah, yeah, why not? Um, <laughs> so do that. Uh, so that's where it covers, you're covering the podcast that way. Do the video too, because that can translate to YouTube. So now that can be an extra addition. Like, hey, do you want this on YouTube as well? Well, that could be part of the package. Um, email mentions. Like, let's say you have an email newsletter that goes out once a week. That can be a mention in there. So you there. make those sort of a la carte or part of that package? Part of the package. So I, I establish like here are like the three buckets of okay, things okay. that we can do together. Each have a different price point. And, you know, let's range. Uh, it could be like 3000 a month for like, let's say the gold. I'm just going to throw some numbers out, you know, and 2000 you know, 1000 kind of thing. Okay. Love it. Okay. That helps a lot. And then when you say a month, you're, you publish once a week, twice a week. I do twice a week now. Yeah, it's kind wow. of crazy. Wow. Okay, <laughs> that's that's a great value. Uh, honestly, if, if those are your what you're charging, great value. A little bit, a little bit more, but what? yeah, but depending, Figure. yeah, no, it is good value, and that's the whole point is because you're gonna make way more by doing that than the CPM. Like honestly, CPM just don't play the game unless you have millions of downloads. Like you're not going to win. <laughs> when you put it that way, I'm like, ugh. Garbage. Let's it none really of us. T- we, we none of us need to touch that. Most people don't do the math. Goal. It's like yeah. do the math. <laughs> I think it's you know it feels it's like um it's an ego thing a little bit you know when Bowl and Branch reaches out to you and sure. you know they want to be on your show you think wow I hear that on CNN like every five minutes mm-hmm. I could tell you that if one eight 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 cars for kids ever contacted me I would. I would run so fast the other direction. I don't know that commercial. It, it makes me insane. Have you have you heard it? Actually, I, I could sing no. it for you right now. I'm not going to do it. It's I'll just do it. well, you know, like the Liberty commercial. Oh yeah, you know, no, it's I, like that annoying. It's it's worse. It's the worst commercial I've ever heard of. Like, I was uh, so tempted to sing it, but I'm not going to. No. <laughs> Please, I will hang up on you. <laughs> All right, Joe. All right. Well, this. Oh, you have one more thing. Yeah, I, I actually. The open loop. I know someone's going to be listening right now. I wrote it down just for us, the network and the shout outs. I'll just (gasps) really fast. Thank you. No, no, you don't have to hurry. We have time. Go ahead. That's why I have. I always got to have a notebook by me or else my brain goes. So yeah, as a network, so I'm just going to say podcast network. So I'm on one now. I've never been a part of officially of a network before HubSpot. And pretty cool. Um, I've learned a lot. And, and yes, there's requirements to be a part of a network. And there's shout outs. Like one of them is an ad that shouts out other podcasts within the network. So you mentioned that and how that works. It's, I mean, in this case, it's it's pretty clear, you know, they give us ad reads, there's, there's a contract. So like contractually, we, I basically say, you know, every episode that goes out needs to have an ad read for them and that's fine that's what i agreed to and that also benefits me and how does it benefit you because now they're shouting me out on their shows as well so it's kind of like as that network we and it's kind of rotating it also benefits in the fact that they um they feature episodes on their website in social media they start sharing it out to i don't know with them it's like a hand at least a few million people on their email list on the reach. I mean, that's huge, HubSpot, huge. But yeah. Any network or collaboration, you can kind of take that concept and that framework and, or you can go direct. Like there's, that's probably the best way to market a, 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 a podcast is to go direct to another show, get them to do a shout out. And either you're paying for that mention or you're doing some kind of collaboration. Maybe you're swapping and doing the same thing on your show. That's what I'd recommend podcast listeners listen to more podcasts and you know like trying to grow it through like facebook ads google ads all that. i've tried it all honestly it's it's good for branding you, you know you show your face somewhere but people it doesn't translate to listens so much so yeah if you can arrange like find some other podcast in your space if you're starting out this could be great 
you might have to pay or give them some kind of offer, make it worth it. Yeah, 30 second ad. Typically it's read by the host, probably not by you, you know, because I think that's better. I mean, it gives it more credibility. Yeah, for sure. I would do that. And yeah. and yeah, treat it as a network. You don't have to be a part of a network, but this is what they're doing. It works. So That is so smart. So, I would like to just summarize that for our listeners because I, or just highlight that we all have friends who are who have podcasts. Yes. So, create your own network right? And reach out and say, hey, let's do a mention swap. As Bingo. long as your audience is, you know, as long as it makes sense with with similar audiences, or, then um, ah, that's such a good idea. It's how I like, I remember like 15 years ago, getting into online marketing, we would do these ad swaps and that would be email lists. Same idea. It's like, yes. hey, you know, and, and it was like this mastermind group, we all kind of started together. So everyone's helping each other. But it's just a group of friends, right? A group of colleagues, people. And it's like, well, just do some agreements like, hey, I got a list of so and so or this amount of people listening. Like, would you be open to doing that and mentioning me? I'll mention you. It's a swap. It doesn't have to go for super long. It could be a couple episodes a month. And gauge the see what happens. You know, it's, I, I bet it'll go up, not down. <laughs> so it's worth trying. You know, I love that. I love that. Any other open loops that we need to close? I think that's it. I, I've been making notes. Uh, I'll find you. links for the one sheet and the sponsorship so you can put those in the um, in the show notes. Okay. My final question is, what are you most excited for in 2024? Hmm. Well, now that I have a new daughter, I'm very excited to oh. have her here because we've been wanting her for a long time. <laughs> so, Congratulations. Like, thank you. Family. I mean, I love, like you mentioned family. It's true. Like I... I, I have so much fun. So I'm looking forward to not to commit to so much. I'm, I'm slowing down. Like, honestly, like with my show, Hustle and Flow Chart, there's the hustle side. So there's the doing, which I'm really good at. And then there's the flow chart, which is more being. I'm like, I want to uh -huh. be more. <laughs> yeah, wanna, good like, for you. Chill out a little bit more. Good for so. you. Are you finding that you are getting very distracted in it? by AI just in all that is happening right now? I I, I am. <laughs> I'm just... I, I have and yeah. not as much anymore uh, because, uh, well, I'm actually in it deeper than I ever thought I would be. Like mm -hmm. somehow I found myself as an advisor of a Silicon backed, like, you know, big, big company, like where they're raising money. It's called Delphi.ai. I recommend trying it out, everyone. What is it? What, what is it? So uh, it's it's basically a way to clone your likeness used based off of all of your content. And it's perfect for podcasters, too. Is it like Hey Jen? No, different. But Hey Jen's pretty cool, too. It is. No, this is actually... So if you go to... Well, I'm just going to give you a free link because this bypasses the front. If you go to hustleandflowchart.com slash Delphi, that's D-E-L-P-H-I, Will th that's the sign up page? There's a free tier. I think if you go to their website, it's not there. So that's what I'm saying. Use that link. They luckily gave that to me. Basically, it's a chat bot kind of interface. There's also an audio call in feature. And if you can imagine, all of my episodes are in this bot. So 570 something episodes, uh, videos, blog posts, social, like all this stuff's been loaded into this personal AI clone. So now I can ask it and anyone else can ask it anything. And, and, and literally, it starts to act almost like a consultant in a way. What is the uh, interface? So the interface itself, it, there's a chat interface. So it's, it's actually on their like website. Like a chat box. Okay. Yeah. Um, and if you go to hustleandflowchart.com slash bot, B-O-T, you can try it. So there's so many links and I did not mean I to do this. But... I love it. No, it's fine. We all love it. It's I, it's fun. Yeah. I feel like shouting all this stuff. I'm just in one of the hard jobs. <laughs> but try it out because it it talks and thinks in it kind of like me because it's using literally my content and the way that I present ideas and also my guests as well. So you're in there, Jen. Wow. Um, the bot knows about you. <laughs> and wow. So it can it can ask about specific things and help the user. So it's not like chat GPT where it's more broad. It actually starts to like consult with you. It's like, okay, so you want to learn about how to grow a podcast, Jen, like, have you thought about this? And it'll be like an open loop question to you. And then it goes deeper. And then it's using the database and the knowledge base from my podcast 
to give you insights based off of, you know, experts on the show and all that. Is it priced affordably enough for most small solopreneurs? Yeah. I think it's like, and this is partially what I was telling them when it, when advising them, I was like, you need a free tier. So they did that luckily. And also I think it's like $20 a month as like the base oh, yeah, level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I know, great. Before it was going to be like a hundred bucks. I was like, too much. <laughs> Come on. like We need to go down. So yeah, try it out. It's There's also this call-in feature where you can train your voice and it's using, you know, some technology. Eleven Labs is one of those. Mm -hmm. But this is built in and the bot sounds like me just off of like a couple of really rough recordings I've given it. I didn't really try to train it too much. It sounds a little sleepy sometimes. Sometimes it needs to bump up yeah, the, uh, needs the energy. Yeah, it needs but, zappier affect. Yeah, yeah, I did a whole podcast actually of me talking to my clone and it, it was fun. I'm not going to lie. Oh, like, I might. Do you mind if I borrow that idea? Because Please do it. I okay. think everyone should. I was like, this is actually kind of fun because I'm learning from me in a weird way. But also, I know it's putting different concepts together that I wouldn't put together. And it, it blows my mind. So I'm just going to say like 2024 is the year of, I feel like cloning is going to be a big thing. And I wouldn't say that in a scary way. You know, a lot of creators take it as such. Uh, there's tools like Delphi, which I think every creator should be trying out and at least testing and seeing what's possible. And then you're going to, because this thing like integrates with your email, like Zapier, you can start growing your email list this way. It could be a, it's integrated on your website. Literally, it's like now you can engage with your audience in a way that I've never seen before. Yeah. And this and this is why I say that I have been like swallowed into this, you know, <laughs> hole. Uh, I just got back from traffic and conversion. And, oh, you uh, went? Cool. Yep. My and friends. I watched this. Do you know Roland Frazier? I know him very well. He's a good friend of mine. His presentation knocked my socks off. And um and so I just knew I wasn't going to be able to sleep. I was like, I just got to get my hands on this. And then just, you know, Zapier has always been wonderful. But now Zapier combined with these tools and like what's possible, no one's even had time mm -hmm. to really stretch any of this stuff out. I mean, in our marketing world, maybe, you know, I'm not talking about NASA scientists, but yeah. I mean, like in our world, nobody has had. There, because there is not enough time at the pace at which it is happening <laughs> for us to really be able to stretch it out and, and test and and see what's really possible. And that's the part of we've, we've totally just jumped into a whole new episode. I love it. I but know that, we did. <laughs> that is, that is the part that just makes my heart beat fast. It's just like, yeah. wow, you know what, what, what's possible. Everything. Endless. It's endless. Jen, it's endless. Yes. And like, literally I find myself now I'm like managing an app development team as oh part gosh. of a, there's a, He's now a really good friend, but Mike Koenigs is, um, I don't know if you know him. Or... I've heard his name, but I don't, I don't know him. Yeah. He's, I worked with him for a lot of years and now we become partners and, and he's here in it's San like Diego. It's like K-A-E-N-I-N-G? K-O-E-N-I-G-S. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was yeah, totally I off. It's taken a lot of time to <laughs> nail that, that spelling, <laughs> but point is like, yeah, we're, we're literally developing AI apps now because there's a lot of low code, no code interfaces. And if you have really good developers, you can start to stitch this stuff together like you're talking about and start to automate. Maybe it's a lead gen process where it like actually enriches data and follows up in a smart way and, you know, fulfills a better outcome than a human could ever do because we're all bad at follow up. And, you know, it's like, things like that as a as a business owner definitely don't be scared of ai but you know don't don't uh don't sleep on it <laughs> i'll just say that it's that's not going right. anywhere that's yeah. right that's right i so, can agree we'll leave more. it there that's a whole right. other discussion <laughs> <laughs> yes well and i'd love to have you uh i'd love to have you back to talk to talk more about ai if you're willing joe thank you so much for sharing your brilliance and Folks, make sure you check out the Hustle and Flow Chart podcast. Of course, we shared a bunch of links today. We're going to put that in the show notes. Uh, his main link is hustleandflowchart.com slash checklist. We're going to make that the main, <laughs> the main link so you can get that awesome checklist. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Go enjoy that baby girl and um, I'll see you soon. Thank you, Jen. Appreciate you. Thanks for listening.